Hey y'all, so before I get this video started, let me give a quick shout out. These were the first three comments in my last video. If you want to be featured in my next video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and come show me some love when I drop a new video. What's up you guys, it's Kian Bravon, AKA Coach Key, coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. So as y'all can tell by the title of this video, it's time to do my super duper, duper late February budget recap or budget results. Um, my March budget actually started on March 10th. So yeah, and I know y'all probably were like, where are your inconsistent self been? Listen, I ain't been nowhere. I honestly was kind of questioning whether I wanted to continue with YouTube and I decided to because at the end of the day, it's bigger than just me. So here I am. All right. So what I've done is I've already prepared everything. The only thing we have to plug in are the actual numbers versus what was budgeted. And then you guys know, well, if you're new here, I do like to do pluses and minuses to see how off I was, whether I was super under budget or way over budget in particular categories. With this particular budget, I took off work all of February. I saved $22.50 back in December to pay myself a salary for February. And that is where the majority of this income came from. Well, almost the majority. So let's get started. So for paycheck one, I, and I have, you guys know, I did the February budget in my printable workbook. So I'll be, kind of flipping back and forth there. So for paycheck one, I did budget 1039.68, which is what the actual was. And I need another color. So $650.69 of this came from my last paycheck from my job. And then the other portion of it, I pulled out of that money that I saved up for this particular month. So I'm gonna do all the actuals in blue and then the pluses or minuses will be of course in red and green respectively. Paycheck two, I budgeted <clears throat> 1106.94, which is what I had basically the portion that did not come from the YouTube paycheck, I pulled out of my savings, but I wanted to make sure I separated the YouTube income so that I could see like, you know, what that is when I go back and look at it in the future. So <clears throat> the total income was exact. That's because most of, basically what I, what I did was however much didn't come from my job or YouTube, I pulled out of savings. That's why it's exact this month. So let's do this. There is no plus or minus because it was right on target. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into these expenses. So as far as my rent goes, my actual was $300. All of my fixed expenses are always like on point <clears throat> for the most part. So I'm just gonna write those in. If you're new here, I live with my mother and sister voluntarily. That's my choice. That's why my rent is so low. I do live in a low cost of living area though, regardless. So let's go ahead and put these in. So as far as my expenses go, let me show y'all how the month ended and then we'll plug all the numbers in. Um, I did end up negative in a few categories and that ended up being because of some expenses that I was not um, really budgeting for. I did pay $95 for this, um, these hair products that one of my old basketball teammates, she came out with her own line. And for me, I've never been able to find a whole hair care line that I liked for my hair. I always only like one or two products out of the whole line. So I decided to try hers because that's how she was selling it as a complete system. So that made me go over in my personal household category, but I was okay with that. Um, she had just launched it and I wanted that price versus it being like $35 more later. Then I did have to pay for a BLS class for my new job. At my last job, they actually did our CPR classes at the facility, but it was only first aid. We did first aid, AED, basically whatever it was, it wasn't BLS. So I had to pay for that out of pocket and that was almost $100. So that took me over in the miscellaneous category. Um, 
I did go ahead and finish off paycheck two. I'll show you guys how that worked. I did accidentally put in the wrong income here because I forgot to in include the amount of what I put over in taxes because I was taking it back out in the savings portion. So I had to go back and fix those numbers versus what you saw when I actually put this video out. So I did end up saving the 431.15 and then by the end of the month, I still have $435.31 in my account that was over my $4,000 buffer or baseline in my account. So I did split that money off. We'll go into that pretty soon. And I finished off the simplified method. You guys know that I decided to put this together for you guys. If y'all wanna see how this finished off, I'll do this at the very, very end so I can show y'all that. Okay, so that's how the month ended. So because I use an expense tracker, I always know my pluses or minuses, but I don't know my actual. So we go backwards in that particular category. So as far as groceries go, I actually only went grocery shopping once. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I did. And that's only because right before that month started, I knew that it was gonna be snowing. February is our snow month here where I live. So I like stocked up on a whole bunch of stuff right before the month started. And that's why I only needed to go grocery shopping once. So personal household, that is the category I was over budget. $57.45. And I need a new red pen, clearly. Okay, restaurants, I was still under budget. $5.35. Gas, I budgeted $70 and I only filled up one time. So I still had $31 left in that category. I hope I haven't been, you know what? Let me move this up. Hope I haven't been moving all around on my mic. If I have, I'm so sorry, y'all. Okay, so for shopping, let's see. I was under budget $12.31. The only thing that I purchased in the shopping category was an aerobic stepper. And that was it. That was like 62 bucks. Um, supplements, I think only one of the two supplements came out. So I still had $65. Oh, because I budgeted that I was gonna buy some more black seed oil, but because my mom has stopped using hers because she's lazy, um, I just decided to take hers over. Okay, so for business, I did not spend anything. I normally don't, but I prefer to have something in this category than nothing and then need it. And then in the miscellaneous category, again, I was over budget because I had to spend $100 on my BLS class, basic life support for my job. And I don't know why that wasn't actually reimbursed. It could be, I have to ask, I don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead and fit it, figure out the actuals. So for groceries, I budgeted 300, I spent 257, or I had 257.91 left over, so I only spent $42.09. For personal household, because I was over budget 57.45, I know that I spent 157.45. For restaurants, I still have 535 left over, so I spent 44.65. For gas, I spent $39, filled up once, because once the snow came, I literally did not leave my house for uh, 12 days, I think. Yeah. So for, what is this, shopping, I spent $62.69. Again, I was just an aerobic stepper. And then supplements, I spent $33.46. business I spent zero and then miscellaneous I really spent 200 and something dollars what did I spend was that right so I got the these treats for me and my sister 
I got my grandma this tablet pad thing that's 40 something. I spent money on a game that's 25 and 65. Oh yeah. So then um, I gave my grandma some money for her birthday and then yeah, okay. So for miscellaneous, I spent two eleven fifty. Okay, so the totals for the actual, let's go ahead and get this together and then we'll move on to savings. And then for those of y'all who are interested in the simplified method and how that ended up working out, I'll put that at the very end. 44, 65, 39, 62, 69, 33, 46, 211, 50. So I spent one thousand one hundred ninety four dollars and ninety eight cents versus the fourteen forty seven sixty that I budgeted for. Now I'm just going to go to the pluses and minuses column and get that together. So subtract, then we add thirty one. So I did start my new job, you guys, and it's so lax. It reminds me of my previous job, but even more relaxing. Um, the only thing is that I still haven't, so I spent two fifty two sixty two dollars less than what I thought. So my first day I was on the adolescent and admission unit. And for those of y'all who don't know, I just started working at an eating disorder facility. So it's a lot different than what I was doing before on Friday, I will be orienting on the residential, the adult residential unit. And then next week will probably be the adolescent residential unit. And then I'm not sure the fourth day of orientation and then I'll be on my own. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into savings. Okay, so what I budgeted for taxes was 6726, which is what I actually sent off. That basically was 20% of my YouTube check. For miscellaneous slash investment, I budgeted 22111. What I actually sent was I had 127.36 from paycheck two. When I reconciled my account down at the end of the month, I sent another 152.35. And then paycheck one, I sent 53, uh oh, I sent 53.35. So what I actually sent off was 336 or 333.06. So for the car sinking fund, I sent 54.58 paycheck two. When I reconciled down, I sent 65.30. And then paycheck one, I sent, I think it's 22, yeah, 22.86. So I sent 142.74 to that account. For the travel sinking fund, we got 54.59, 65.31, and another 22.86. So when I reconciled my account down at the end of the month, what I could have done was send that money back to that portion that I saved for um, when I didn't have income coming in. The only reason that I didn't, and I explained this when I did my March budget, is I know I'll have enough money coming in for my March budget to cover me. Um, so I don't need to like continue to fund that particular account where I save the money for when I didn't have a job. So basically at the end of this month, whatever is still left over and what I saved for when I was out of work, I'm gonna send that off into my different accounts because I won't need it there anymore now that I have a steady weekly income. Okay, so for medical sinking fund, we got 127.36, then I sent 152.35 at the end of the month and 53.37 in paycheck one. So I sent 333.08. So if I add up everything, I saved $1,018.90. I do want to do my pluses or minuses over here. Is this the one that doesn't work? No, that should work. 
All right, so let me do the pluses or minuses here. So I saved 111.95 more in this account than I thought. 142.74 minus 94.76. 47.98 more in that one. $48 more in this one. $111.95 in that one. So if I add it all up, I saved $319.88 more than what I thought. I budgeted $699.02 and I saved 10.18.90. Okay, and then down here, this was just my tracker for how much I took out of that money that I saved up for myself to pay myself while I was out of work. Okay, so if I had to give myself a grade before we go over to the simplify method, if you guys are um, interested in that, what I saved of my income was, my actual was 21.46.62. So I saved 47.4% of my income. And if I had to give myself a grade, I'll give myself an A. I'm gonna give myself an A because I did go over budget in two categories. However, this one would have only really been like 11 bucks if I didn't have that BLS class, that that's not anything that I could have even thought about having to need. Um, so yeah, I'll just give myself an A. I won't do plus because I did go over in several categories, but I did save almost half of my income. So that was pretty cool. All right, um, so that's the end of that part portion of the video. But again, if you guys want to see the simplified method, let me show you that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom you out so that you could see the entire thing and I can kind of like walk you through the map okay so where we left off paycheck two after I had the um, paycheck to income which again it was I wrote the wrong number in here so you're gonna see me like add that money back in here but anyway so this is what was in my account after the direct deposit this is the direct deposit account over here on the left is the spending or variable expense account and then over here is the bill account the fixed expense account those are three different accounts right so we took the money out to put towards the variable expenses took the money out for the fixed expenses and then I put the money over here for the taxes right so what was left over after splitting that money up was 631.76 again I wrote the wrong number in here because I didn't account for um, the tax money like it has to be there before I take it out if that makes sense so really what was left over in my account was 699.02 and then what's left over in the variable expense account after I spent 404.98 for paycheck two cycle was 252.62 my fixed expenses everything came out so that account ended up at zero so down here what I did was I took what was left in the variable expense account what was left in my direct deposit account and then what I already sent off to savings that ended up being a thousand dollars a thousand eighteen dollars and ninety cents which you guys saw on the previous page now if this was how I was actually doing my budget let's not pay attention down here let's just pay attention to this number this number and what we already sent off so I'm gonna zoom y'all back in so that y'all can see a little bit better so this is what I would do a lot of people do end up overspending in their variable expense account on like in various months. So you could keep this money here and roll it over. However, what you don't wanna do is start keeping so much money rolled over over here and you're still in debt, okay? So 
you do want somewhat of a buffer. If I were most people, I would just do like a hundred dollar, maybe a hundred and fifty dollar buffer here. So let's say my buffer was a hundred dollars. I would take the remaining one fifty two sixty two, and we're gonna take that and put it towards savings and debt. The six ninety nine oh two. Remember, I already have a buffer of four thousand dollars in my account. Everybody should have some kind of buffer in their direct deposit account as well, just in case. So, because of that, I can take this entire six ninety nine oh two and split that off as well. Because I'm not in debt, what I literally had to do was send both of these off to savings because I don't need a buffer for my variable expense account. I don't overspend very often. And when I do overspend in different categories, the overall budget, I don't overspend in, okay? So what I would do is if I was still in debt, I would keep the $100 buffer here. The 152.62 I would split off half and half. So half will go to savings and half will go to debt. What's left over here, again, same thing. Half will go to savings, half will go to debt. Ooh, that was a big B. <laughs> that was on accident. So that means that out of 152.62, 76.31 would go to each of these. And then out of the 349.51 will go towards each of those. So if I were to add it up, I would basically end up at the end of the month sending 425.82 off to savings and another 425.82 off to debt. And then again, the 67.26 was already sent off to savings for my taxes. So that is how I would do it if I was still in debt. Of course, again, because I'm not, everything just goes to savings. So hopefully that kind of made sense to you guys. I probably won't be doing the simplified method in my budgets anymore if I'm being completely honest with y'all because I that's not how I do it. But I did want to show it being done in several budgets and a row so that you guys can kind of go back for clarification if you needed to. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them down below. Please thumbs up this video, subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.